Hey everyone, it's uh, it's been a little while since I made a video regarding Dead Frontier 2 or just any video in general, um, and I do apologise. Um, it's uh, it's a really rough it's a really rough time for uh, Dead Frontier as a whole, I think, and I think the majority of the community could agree. Um, this video is not really going to be a news video. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's no news. I can check right now. I haven't actually checked today, but to be honest, I don't think there's anything new. There's a Dead Frontier one announcement. Oh, who'd have fucking thought? Wow. Wow, Definitely 2 is literally at the bottom now. Oh boy, oh boy. There's a Devil's Implant. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I, I didn't know this was a thing, but... Basically, I, I want to talk about the state of Definitely 2 as a whole. My problems with everything going on. Um, because it's it's driving me nuts, and I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna try to make this not very edited. I'm gonna try and just go through as many issues as I can. There will be stuttering. There will be the odd ums and ahs here and there quite frequently. I do apologize. It's just I can't really get my point across if I'm editing it the entire time. I want to be as genuine and, and sort of upfront with my opinion on the whole situation for you guys. Um, because I feel like there is a massive problem right now, and it all comes down to your boy uh, Neil. <laughs> Yates. It, it really, it, it's all about him. Um, and I don't think there's anyone else who can really turn this around at the moment. And I think it's necessary to start a conversation, talk about it, and just see where we go with it. So, I'm going to quickly start off by saying I didn't make a video regarding him splitting his time between uh, Dead Frontier 1 and 2. I tried many times. I've probably tried about four or five times to make a video on it. And I've made my opinion, I've made my opinion clear in some of the live streams I've done. Um, but I tried to make a video, I just was not happy with the outcome, I wasn't happy with how sort of angry I came across, I just was not, I wasn't very concise, I wasn't very easy to understand, I mean I never am, but I, it was especially bad in this video, and I tried so many times to get it right, but I just couldn't, so I just was like, right, okay, I'm not going to do it, but I did say to myself I would make a video just talking about the state of the game, and this is what this video is about. So, it's, it's been a little while, um, it's, it's been a tiny little bit of a while now since he said that, I think it's actually been around... It's been around a month, I think, nearly, since he said that. Um, but he is splitting his time, apparently, equally between Dead Frontier 1 and 2. Um, and I'm not happy with it. And I've said it before. I'm not happy with it at all. I, I've calmed down, but I'm not happy with it. Because my opinion, uh, and I think a lot of people's opinion, is that this is the new game. This is the future of Dead Frontier. Uh, Dead Frontier 2 marks the future. And let's be real, it's not a bad game. I don't think it's a bad game in terms of quality. You can have your opinion on it. Everyone has opinions on games. It's fair enough. But I think when we look at the, the core quality of the game, it's not terrible. It is just lacking in content. There's a lot of um, annoying things in the game. Uh, the movement system's a bit weird. Uh, what else? Uh, prestige system, remove it. I don't have to say any more. Um, there's, there's a few things here and there in the game that are a bit annoying. Uh, mainly the, the leveling system. And the game is a massive grind fest, which is not really, from what I know, what these kind of games are about. I don't play a lot of MMORPGs or RPGs in general, but in my experience, you don't go around grinding every five seconds. You know, it's not really the the, the core aspect of what the game is about. Obviously, it's a massive feature, but I should be able to get into the game and have fun and not be feel like I have to play it just so I can grind. You know, it's not it's not intuitive, I guess is the term. Um, and that's just the way I feel about the game, really. But I think the game itself, the core of it, and what he's done with it, for a new-time player, the majority of experiences, I reckon, would be pretty positive. If you're just coming into Death Frontier 2, and you know that it's one man who made the game, you aren't expecting AAA quality, and you've never played Death Frontier 1 in your life, I think you'd actually quite like the idea and enjoy the, the gameplay for a little while. But I don't think it would last very long. And judging by some of the reviews I've seen, there's a lot of people who don't seem to click with the game as much as I did, uh, like 10 hours of game time, and then they're just like, yeah, I'm not, not really liking this, you know, all that, I've already gone through the content, there's so many people complaining about the amount of doors and stuff, um, but the thing is, this is to be expected with Steam games, and that's what I don't think Neil really thought about when he was making the game, um, I don't think he really thought about Steam as a community, because he made a game called Doom Warrior, uh, I've only played the tutorial of it, and I played it recently, like when I got into Death Frontier 2, people were going about Doom Warrior, I was like, can someone clue me in on Doom Warrior, because I've never played it before, but I played it, like, I, I, I launched the demo, I gave it a little go, and um, it looks okay, I don't 100% understand why it wasn't popular, well not popular, I don't understand why it, why it didn't really click with people, it looks okay to me, but um, that game from what I know is literally launched on its own website and not on Steam. 
if you launch a game on Steam, you have to expect that kind of criticism. Crit criticism on Steam is next level. I want to make games um, in the future, and I've been working on indie games. I've done a few Final Fantasy fan games, um, and uh, I have one in progress that I'm working on. Well, I say working on. I haven't worked on it for months, but I intend to finish it at some point in the future. Um, and I intend to eventually, hopefully, create a game and put it on Steam. But I want to make sure that I can handle the criticism that comes with that because Steam is the most sort of like brutal storefront. Uh, it is. It's not an easy, an easy game. It really isn't, and it it takes a lot of. I, I'm not going to try and deny it. You know, he's one dude, and getting your game slammed is not fun. But you have to expect this kind of thing when you're going on Steam. You know, if you make a game like this, people, and you know, it's in, it's in this kind of genre, and you're charging money whatever the hell it's gonna get criticism because it's 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 a serious it's a serious storefront it's not just pissing about on game job and making a free game this is a serious serious business that he's getting into you should have expected this kind of thing to happen you know you have to expect a lot of criticism there is a lot of criticism that comes with this game and i've seen plenty of it and right now i don't think there's really barely anyone being positive about death frontier 2 every time i go on that reddit there is so much being said about the game about how it's dead and everything and i don't think it's dead don't be wrong i don't think that death frontier 2 is dead but it is on a slippery slope uh, it's it's not a good place it's not a good time for the game but i think neon really needs to step up and realize that this is steam this is not his own website that you can moderate this is steam and you have to be careful about what you're releasing here um with time i think this game could be fantastic and uh, i think a lot of us see that vision and i don't want death frontier 1 to be the main focus you know i really don't death frontier 1 is great but it's it's not going to grow i'm sorry it, it's just not it's 2018 when you really think about it right death frontiers among the old games like club penguin and i think toontown and all them right it's so old <laughs> and it's still going and i respect that but neil really needs to pack it in and just be like right okay i should be focusing on the future death frontier 2 is the future this game is gonna you know propel the series in the right direction and um i don't know it's it's uh it's it's not right so i don't like the fact that death frontier 1 is the main focus at all i don't um because he said that he split his time between both games evenly that's what he's gonna do we haven't had one update for Death Frontier 2 in just about a month. In over a month, actually. Uh, we haven't had any news regarding Death Frontier 2. It's all been about Death Frontier 1. In the space of a month, Death Frontier 1 has had loads of updates. And that's not even... I, I mean, that's a very f weird thing to throw out there. But let me just have a look here. It's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's got 5 updates. And a lot of those are actually content updates. Right? A lot of that is content updates. There's a crafting system now for gold members that's going to be coming active for non-gold members on the 20th. I haven't got a gold membership anymore. I didn't bother buying one since Death Frontier 2. Um, but I will check that out on the 20th, see what it's like. I don't really care too much, but ridiculous. A crafting system. He's, he's adding a new update today, literally today, to Death Frontier 1, that now, you know, apparently... What? Now spawns in the inner city for an hour roughly... What the hell? I didn't read that properly. The Devil Hound now spawns in the inner city for an hour roughly once every few days. Killing it will give you a Devil's Heart. Collect enough Devil Hearts and you can craft the Devil's Implant. And there's a new limited edition implant. Um, and he's also added a Dusk Implant as well. Like, there's so much crap he's added. I'm just sitting there like, why? You know? It's it's really telling as well, the fact that Death Frontier 1 is now the main thing on Discord. Like, I'm, I've, I've gone on the Death Frontier Discord. DF2 is actually at the bottom. Whereas Death Frontier 1 is at the bottom, originally. This is, uh, this is not good. It's, it's just not good. It really does feel like he's just throwing the game away. As I say, DF2 has potential. And the reason I mention that Neil is, you know, it, the reason it all comes down to him is because he's the creator of it. He, he is the man behind it. And he could be doing so much better with the game right now. He could be doing some actually, you know, helpful stuff. I don't know. I can't believe that he's more motivated to work on his old game than the second one. I cannot believe that. I can't I can't believe it. I don't care if it's making more money, you know. You could make even more money if you made Death Frontier 2 good. In in the grand scheme of things, obviously not using proper analytics, but if you actually, you know, made Death Frontier 2's payment model make sense, uh, be intuitive, make me want to actually use it, I'm pretty sure it would make more money. And if you made the game much better, it would make more money. Death Frontier 1 is obviously going to make more money at the moment because it's pay to win. With the amount of stuff you can buy in Death Frontier 2, there's not really a lot of chance that you... 
really spending a lot of money on it. And when you allow people to reserve credits when they've bought them in the past, you ain't going to make any revenue, are you? Um, I'm trying to think right now. You can buy character unlocks, which again, you only really need two characters at most, so that's already a, 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 a minus. Uh, you can make, what else, what else is it, you can buy cosmetics, most profitable thing probably, uh, but again, people who reserve credits can just get those easily, and the cosmetics right now are pretty shit, no offence, uh, what else, is there actually anything else, I don't think there's anything else you can buy with credits, I'm pretty sure there isn't anything you can buy with credits after that, which is ridiculous, you know, that's not going to make you enough money, Def uh, the cosmetics can make you money, but you need to make the cosmetic system make sense, you know, uh, you need to make these things have value, um, somehow or other, and make sure the cosmetics are actually decent, you know, because the cosmetics we got right now are not really that great. I would have spent all my credits on them if they were actually decent. Throw in a bloody exterminator reactive in there, I would have bought that easily and run it. But there wasn't one, so you know, sad, sad life, sad life. But yeah, it's uh, it's 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 there's not really an incentive to buy stuff in Difference Here Two, so you're not going to make much revenue as it is. But the way it all looks to the community and myself is that he's just given up on the game. I don't necessarily think he has. I think he is staying with the game. But he's working on it in his own time, which I don't think is good. I, I don't think that's fair on any of us, um, you know. And this is a personal thing here. As a Dead Frontier 2 fan and a Dead Frontier 1 fan, and as a person who loves Dead Frontier 2 and wants that one to be the main focus and is a massive fan of that over Dead Frontier 1, I sit here and I'm just like, we're not getting any love. We're, we're just not getting any love. And there's probably plenty of people who've already left the game. I'm surprised there's a good 200 people that still play the game, if I'm being completely honest. Neil needs to step up and say something. That is that is the biggest issue with this game in general and Death Frontier 1 is there's no communication. He used to be quite communica uh, communicative. Is that the word? I don't know. He used to be quite um, uh, quite talkative in Discord from what I recall before the game came out. He'd often sell, tell us what's going on with it. You know, is this the case? Is that the case? How are you going to spend credits? All this other stuff. But... Since the game's come out, he's not said anything. And since he's said anything since the uh, Death Frontier 1... Uh, split in time thing. Uh, he has not said a damn word. He's not said anything from what I know in the Discord. I don't think he's actually replied to anyone, which is just ridiculous. Actually ridiculous. The fact that he can put smileys on the Dead Frontier 1 announcements as if everything's okay is actually so upsetting to me. It's so upsetting because it's not okay. This ain't okay. You can't go around saying that, oh, this is, you know, this is. I'm splitting my time equally, but you haven't even updated Death Frontier 2 in a month. You haven't fixed any bugs, you haven't uh, made any quality of life changes, you haven't... I'm not asking you to add a new demon or asking add, add a new monster or anything like that. I just want some communication here and there. You know, as a developer, your responsibility is to communicate with your audience so that they know what the hell to expect. I try to communicate with my subscribers when I can or when I feel it's necessary. Um, but, you know, unlike Neil, I'm not <laughs> I'm not getting thousands of messages per day asking me what the hell's going on, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to go around and, you know, just sit on my ass working on videos and not say a damn word and then one day just drop it all in your head. Um, you know, I would actually answer questions if people were asking, you know? That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think it's fair for Neil to just sit back and almost just let this storm just, just go. You cannot just be quiet. And I get it, you know, I 100% get it. You might be depressed, you might be upset, you might be worried, you might be anxious about how people are going to take your responses. If you want to cancel Death Frontier 2, just do it. Tell us. Tell us that this game is done and you're going back to Death Frontier 1. You know, tell us what your plans are because right now we don't know. If you actually had followed through on your promise and was updating Death Frontier 2, I wouldn't really be so upset. I'd be like, okay, that's fair enough. And I'd actually, you know, just keep going on with it and wouldn't be so bewildered, but... If you don't say anything to your community, they're not going to stick around, are they? And you, you come across as a lot more of a scammy sort of kind, especially to the people who aren't, you know, used to Death Frontier, uh, you know, the people who don't know you as a developer, people who've come from Steam and seen this game on the front page and be like, oh, this looks interesting, and they've maybe gotten into it. They're not going to know Neil. They're not going to know Abin Pone. They're not going to know who you are. And, you know, to the majority of the Steam community, this may look very shady. You know, it's not... A good look right now and I think what the majority of the community wants is just a bit of a, a bit of communication uh, so that this game doesn't just die and if it's to die let us know you know let us know don't sit back and you know act like everything's okay you know just let us know I, I made an analogy in my video that I still think is kind of fitting and I basically said that 
this whole situation with him going back to Dead Frontier One is like he's just left his parents' house. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make the world my world, sort of thing. You know, he's gonna he's gonna make he's making good for himself, and he finds out what the world is really like, and then he goes back home to mum and dad. That's what this feels like. He's literally he's he's gone from his own little website and he's gone to a massive storefront. And he's acting all confident, saying that, you know, this game is made by one dude. Please, you know, judge it fairly. Try not to be too overly critical of it and realise that I'm a one-man dude. He's all confident about it. Releases the game. Everything's going well. Then people start leaving. And all of a sudden he realises how horrifying the storefront is for a new developer, I guess is the word. And all of a sudden, oh shit, I've got to go back home. It's... it. It's telling. It really is. It's not. Uh, it's not a funny matter. It's. It's serious. It. It really is serious. And I love the game. And I'm gonna continue sticking with it until we get some news. But oh boy. Um. Oh boy. And to be honest, I've been doing other videos here and there. Like I did the Escape from Tarkov video, and a few people watched it, which I appreciate. Um. But I don't feel like I want to do that. Because it doesn't really engage my community much. I want to do Dead Frontier 2 videos, if I'm being completely honest on a personal note here. I want to do more Dead Frontier 2 videos. Maybe do a few Let's Plays, live stream it more. But there is no need to with the current state of the game. And that is so sad. It really is so sad. There is no need for me to whip up Dead Frontier 2. Like, I could stream Dead Frontier 2 every day. I could. I could do that if I really wanted. If I really, really wanted to play Dead Frontier 2, I could stream it every single day. But I don't want to. That's the point. I don't want to play the game. I haven't touched the game in about a month or even longer because there's nothing <laughs> compelling to do it. And when the developer looks like he's just quitting, it's like, what's the point? What is the point, you know? And I think content creators for this game is going to be a big deal, you know? Uh, it's going to be a big a big thing to drive this sort of game forward, you know? There's been a few big YouTubers who've com uh, you've played the game before, you know, and they haven't really stuck with it, but it doesn't surprise me. It's... The game is just in a rough place, man. It is in a rough place. But I'm going to stop this video here. I think I got my, point, my points across. I apologise for just how much I do say ums and ahs and how it was all sort of all over the place and there was no structure to it. But I don't know how I'm going to be able to structure a video like this. So I just sort of was like, I'm going to pick up the microphone, talk bollocks and see what people think, you know. Um, so thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all uh, checking it out and stuff. My dog is barking. I don't care. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Happy thoughts. Happy, happy thoughts.